Thank you and welcome back to the Copenhagen Fintech Lab. Uh, located in uh, yeah, uh, cold and rainy Copenhagen at the moment, but luckily in a warm studio. For those of you that just tuned in, welcome to our panel. Uh, I'm extremely excited to, uh, to be talking with these um, very good competences around partnerships as a driver for sustainable innovation in wealth and asset management. My name is Thomas Koh and I'm the CEO of Copenhagen Fintech. So we'll just do a, a quick round of introductions of you guys. Uh, I'll start with you, Christine. Maybe you would Thank like you. to introduce yourself and value. Yes. Thank you, Thomas. Yes, hi everybody. My name is Christine Hunderup. I am Chief Digital Officer of Velle, which is Denmark's third largest life and pension company. We serve more than 350,000 customers. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I am responsible for the online self-service solutions for our customers, all our AI initiatives and our innovation lab. Great, thank you, Christine. And then uh, I know some of you people may already have heard uh, Klaus. But again, for those who just tuned in, Klaus, can you say just a few uh, words about yourself and okay. Simcorp? Yeah, I'm Klaus Halter, the CEO of Simcorp. Simcorp is a company that services the buy-side industry. We uh, service investment managers that have uh, assets of more than 20 billion uh, US dollars and up. And uh, we provide a system that covers all of the uh, work processes from the front to the back, and we cover all asset classes. And then we are quite open to partnerships. Uh, the other people on the panel here we are partnering with, uh, Christina's company is a, is a customer of ours and we are a customer of theirs and Igor and uh, us is also partners. Great. And then uh, with that uh, nice handover to you, Igor, would you give us a few words on yourself and your company? Sure. So uh, I'm CEO of IntelliBonds and our company is really helping uh, fixed income institutional investors to cut costs and improve returns. And we are doing it through the combinations of AI powered algorithms and robotic process automation, effectively, you know, to do the work of, of many with the work of a few algorithms that effectively collaborate with your with your workforce. Fantastic. So um, I'm as I said in the beginning, I'm super excited about this panel because this is basically zooming in on two of the, the topics that are super hot in the Nordics right now. It's it's partnerships and it's sustainability. So um, I think I will kick it off with asking you, Christina, can you just give a little bit uh, of insights? Of what, why is it that partnerships are so important to value? Um, and maybe start out there. Yeah, well, partnerships are super uh, important to value because technology is developing so fast and uh, in so many areas. So if we on our own had to cover the technology development in all of those areas that would just not be possible money-wise and, and people-wise. So, so that's why we look usually for startups or other partners to, is to see if they have developed some of the solutions that we can use. And if you then combine uh, you know, the partnership approach and then the, the focus that I know you also have in sustainability, mm -hmm. can you say a few words on that? Yeah, well, uh, sustainability is really important for us. We just launched uh, a sustainable product. And uh, uh, of course, we have talked to a lot of, of players in that area. And, uh, and also we are, of course, looking into if, are there any technology advantages that we can use there. So moving on to you, Klaus, a bit here. So I'm, I'm thinking, why is it that this, you know, both the partnership side and the sustainability, why is this so hot right now from your perspective and especially in, in, in the asset management industry? I think that the asset managers out there, they are, they are on a journey on uh, sustainability. Uh, all of their customers, whether you're a pension fund or you're an asset manager, the customers are really asking for sustainable uh, products. So give me funds that I can invest in that has sustainability, that doesn't have kind of all of the brown and black uh, assets that, uh, that is there. We need, as a company, to support this. We need to give them uh, kind of the insights and the optionality in this. And there's a lot of data, a lot of KPIs out there uh, to do this. To be able to do this, you need to partner with all of those uh, companies that really understands this deeply, knows the KPIs, understands each of the asset classes, you know, whether you're in in uh, big assets like windmills or so on, or whether you're just an ordinary company that, you know, needs to get rated and, uh, and, and sustainable or not. There's a lot of complexity in this one, and there's a lot of specialization. We can't have all of that in-house, uh, so partnering with somebody who does have that is super easy for us. And I'm just a little bit curious, because uh, while you were speaking, I was thinking, you know, what, how do you see the difference 
between what's going on in the Nordics now and the huge you know, focus on sustainability and the rest of the world? Because I, one for one, you must have a kind of a global outlook on, on, uh, on this area. I would say, in general, our customers are pushing for this. But it is also very clear that at least the Nordic and the European customers are probably pushing harder uh, at this point because the harder push from their customers is there. So if you're a, if you're value or you're any other, uh, you know, Nordic pension fund, then your customers are asking you to uh, invest in sustainable, you know, uh, the right environmental assets as well. And that means that they are under pressure to actually get the right level of investments into this one, which means they go back to us and ask for the tools uh, to do this. We see more of that in Europe. And then as you go uh, to the rest of the world, you see a little less. But I think it's a trend uh, that's coming. And, uh, you know, we're just at the beginning of it. Fantastic. So moving on a little bit to you, Igor. Um, I'm, I'm curious, can, can you elaborate a bit on what is it actually you do within... Uh, within sustainability in, in this space? Uh, sure. I mean, sustainability is important for us as well. And, and as Klaus was saying, uh, there is a greater push in Europe and also the regulatory environment is much more supportive in Europe. But I think the US uh, will catch up soon. So what we are doing uh, ourselves, well, we are trying to help uh, fund managers and you know institutions to build, let's say, sustainable investment strategies. So, you know, using our platform, uh, we would want them to build, let's say, carbon neutral portfolio or be able to see what uh, asset allocation in the portfolio mean for a global warming, let's say, five or 10 years down the road. And this is kind of the functionality we believe is highly important. And we, we're really spending a lot of time on really uh, coming up with the solutions that, that can address the problem. And we are also looking into the social aspect of sustainability and then through the deployment of technology, we are trying to benefit society overall. And, you know, the typical example is a pension fund. Uh, every every one of us has a, has a private pension, or most of us have, and ultimately you're paying a certain level of fees uh, to the pension fund. But uh, without technology, potentially those fees could be lower to the end client and the end client could have more money in its pension pot once he retires. And at the same time, a pension fund can have an improved margin just because the technology has been deployed into their investment process. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. And for us, sustainability means many things from environment really to the social impact. So Igor, just staying a bit here with you. So um, I would like to ask you also, so can you elaborate a bit on why is it that part, and it might be obvious, but still, again, I think it's interesting to get your perspective on why is it that partnerships for a company like yours is so uh, is so important? Uh, sure. So, um, as Klaus mentioned earlier, you know the distribution network and access to the to the end client is much more difficult for a smaller company. So, so partnering up with large institutions and players like uh, SimCorp is one of the advantages. And then the other advantage is uh, there is a lot of costs you have to incur to make sure that, uh, you know, the data security, uh, the, the integrations with the system is in place. And it's often much easier to have product integrated somewhere where a client has already the solutions in place and integrated in their uh, investment process, and they will just access us through the platform, which they already have, such as SimCorp One. So, you know, I, I think I think this is the main attraction for us. And obviously, there is a lot of room for collaborations in many different projects because, uh, as Klaus was saying, uh, they cannot do it all. Uh, there, there is a lot, lot of different things uh, you can do, but a lot of different things you cannot. And it's much better to partner up and deliver solutions together faster to the end client, which will benefit SIM card and will benefit us at the same time. Great. I think we'll get back a little bit to to the experience around doing partnerships and some of the recommendations, Igor. So uh, yeah, please stay with us for <laughs> for a while. Sure. Um, so moving on, um, I think I'll actually go back to you, uh, Klaus, and, and ask you to elaborate a little bit. You in your presentation, you mentioned a few examples of partnerships you've been doing, but but can you can you elaborate on those uh, a little bit on on those partnerships and. Uh, Maybe also in your experience a little bit on what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, I think that the kind of for, for us, it's all about reducing friction, right? Because the, the partners that are out there, as Igor says, it is friction. That's kind of what kills their opportunity to get into the market. It's this of contracting and getting access and integrating to the right system and so on. So what we've done is we've tried to open up the system with open APIs, uh, so, uh, cost, so other fintechs can integrate into this, and we've tried to uh, kind of find ways uh, to also go to market together. 
the, the partnerships that work well are the ones where there's benefit for everybody. If it only benefits one part, then it's not a real partnership. Then it just becomes kind of a vendor uh, relationship in some senses. So a partnership like the one we have with, uh, with Eagles company or the, the partnership we have with eBlue, it really benefits us because we're able to solve problems that we couldn't solve for that customer before. We're able to better compete with other, some of the other vendors that are out there that might not have that partnership, right? And then, you know, it, it's a benefit to us, it's a benefit to the customer, and it's a benefit to the partner. Those are the partnerships that work. The ones where we kind of say, okay, yes, we'll be a partner with you, but we really don't need that solution for anything. Is not a good partnership because we end up wasting time and money on kind of creating the partnership and we end up selling nothing to nobody and you know that doesn't really work the ones where you know there's benefit to all parties and where there's a demand in the market for that product and that partnership those are the ones that work all right so just maybe staying a, a bit with you here because i want to zoom in then on on that's the partnership part of it but if we take the sustainability then so especially in that area, maybe elaborate a bit on what you've been doing there and also how you see partnerships in general play out in, in that. Yeah. So in sustainability, we've done a number of things. One is that we've kind of built into our, uh, to the SimCorp Dimension platform, we've built in all the opportunity to capture uh, the data. We build in uh, some of the uh, functionality to allow customers to also use that data, understand how they, you know, they uh, manage their portfolios, how they uh, create uh, performance and risk and so on against all of these data. And there's a lot of data in uh, in uh, in this. You know, if you're investing in uh, in uh, wind farms, then suddenly you know it becomes important how big the engine, how many gears, and blah, blah blah, and what wind is blowing. And so there's a lot of opportunity to capture this data. We built this into the system, but yet somebody has to capture that data. And that's the partnerships we do with uh, companies like eBlue. There's other partnerships like this that captures data in other areas. This is a, you know, it's, there's just a lot of, I mean, there's the, uh, the, the UN sustainability goals. You can align to that. But then on top of that, there's just a lot more data that people will want to understand. You know, am I investing in this type of windmills or that type because I don't like this better than that? So there's a lot of, you know, underlying data in this one. And we need to capture it all. We need to make that accessible to the ones that are going to use Igor's tools to construct the portfolio. All right, great. So jumping, uh, jumping to you, Christine, maybe do the same, elaborate a bit on the partnership, because I know you've done a lot of partnerships recently, and, and elaborate a bit on, on the partnerships that you entered into and, and kind of your experience with doing that. Yeah. Well, uh, during the last year, we have actually entered into six partnerships with uh, with startups, and uh, it's uh, they are quite different in nature. So that that's very uh, that's very exciting for us, and and it's uh, I think it's interesting to see that you can actually enter into different type of partnerships with startups. So so if we start with with the, the one where we actually invested in the company, we have uh, invested in Granthood, and they will be selling uh, our pension products, but in their own name, and they will actually be a distribution channel for us to reach a market that we wasn't really in before. And they will also be selling our new sustainable product. And uh, of course, that's a partnership, as Klaus talked about, where we do some integrations and we actually exchange data, etc. So, so that's very exciting for us. Then we, we made uh, a totally different kind of partnership with the, the company called Salary that do uh, small salary uh, systems. And, and actually we just do cross-reference to each other, but no money involved. So we just made a contract that we will cross-reference to each other. Very uh, exciting. And we both benefit from it. So as you say, that's uh, very ex uh, important for us as well. Uh, then we uh, worked together for a long while with Invest Suite, uh, and they made a, a product for us uh, during a POC for a new investment recommendation engine. And I think we're going to put that into production during the first half of next year. And uh, that was just very interesting to, to work with them and, and use their expertise in a, in a field where uh, we might not as have as much expertise in, in within Bellu. Sure. And then we just recently entered into a partnership with Nordic API Gateway using their open banking solution um, uh, through their uh, AYA platform. 
and we're actually going to do, I think, a LinkedIn uh, piece on that uh, oh, later amazing. this week. Yeah, so, so stay tuned so for that. So you get the news here. Mm -hmm. Come so to stay Copenhagen tuned. for the latest. Yeah, it is actually in production yet uh, already, and our customer can use it to just uh, pay. Uh, it's a one-stop shop with us where they can just pay an extra to their pension with uh, this right. solution. And, open, and uh, Nordic API Gateway is an open banking infrastructure platform uh, that kind yes. of facilitates yes. payments. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. So, so the customer just stay within our platform, and then they log into, they choose their regular bank, and then they just log into their regular bank, see all their accounts, choose which one they want to transfer money from, and sign with their name ID, which is the the, the online signature National, we use here in yeah. Denmark. Yeah. Right. So so that's really cool. Uh, we also signed up with BotXO to uh, use for a chatbot, uh, to use their product for a chatbot. And then I think uh, one of the more exciting is that we signed up with 2021. AI to use their Grace platform for our uh, AI development, our machine learning development. And actually, we met Michael, who is a, who's CEO of 2021, uh, last year at Singapore FinTech Festival mm -hmm. when we were part of the Danish delegation together. That's why we do it. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, a lot of our startups has been uh, just by recommendation through Copenhagen FinTech and matchmaking there. So, so we really benefit from from that partnership as That's well. Great. So. Um, so maybe I think just uh, very briefly, because I think especially, especially what you're doing within ethical AI and and uh, together with 2021, can you yeah. just maybe just uh, spend a few minutes on on what is it actually? Because there's a lot of talk about you know ethical application of mm -hmm. technology, ethical ethical AI, and and we talk and we talk and we talk, but I haven't really seen anything really tangible come out of those. Yeah. But I know you have been doing some. Mm -hmm. Some quite interesting things in that. Yeah, actually, we entered into a, a kind of a partnership, development partnership on the Grace platform. So, uh, so they provide the Grace platform, but we provide user knowledge back to them. How, what is it like to actually use it uh, in everyday uh, machine learning development? And uh, and what uh, they did and we did together is that we have made sure that all of these uh, EU guidelines for trustworthy AI they have like a long uh, assessment uh, list. That is worked into the Grace platform. So we need to every time we develop a model, we need to fill out this uh, this uh, assessment list, and it's documented for for uh, for you know uh, control purposes and, and compliance purposes. And uh, and we also made then an assessment list with uh, with values own ethical issues, IT uh, security issues, etc. So the Grace platform provide us with a framework where I, as head of the AI development, can be sure that the data scientists, they have to follow these structures and document their work. And uh, we can make sure that we do it in, a, in an ethical way. Right. We also document which data we use, have we anonymized them or not, and, and, and why have we used them and stuff like that. All right, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So um, jumping a bit, uh, jumping a bit ahead here. I, I think I will take it to you, uh, Igor. And I think um, I know you've been to a lot of uh, a lot of fintech conferences around the world. And I think this is probably not this is probably not the first panel on partnerships and corporate startup collaborations you've you've uh, attended. So so it's it's always something that we discuss at these conferences, and it's always yeah top of the list when it comes to topics. So. So maybe get your get your take on why is it, it you know from your, your perspective and also as an uh, I would call it almost an expert in partnerships why is it uh, from the startup perspective at least why is it that this is so hard why is it that we still need to talk so much about it uh, what is your experience here uh, sure so um, as you correctly said I have been to many events and uh, ultimately you discuss partnership in every single one of them. And why it's important? Well, uh, often, you know, uh, there is mutual benefit for both parties, as Klaus said. Then you have uh, startups potentially pushing with the with new technology much, much faster by a simply integrated solution that has been developed by someone else or co-developing solution with uh, someone who has uh, expertise in the, uh, in, the, in the target market or in, in the target business area. All these things can help you to get to the end client and come up with the end solution much faster than would you than you you would be physically able to do simply by trying to educate yourself and become a business expert in a certain area. And obviously, there are distribution network um, uh, aspect to to any partnership which uh, which we do uh, ourselves. And the final bit, I would say, uh, you know, the data. I mean, the, the current 
environment is all about the data. And um, I was saying earlier to be talking internally with my colleagues that effectively who controls data controls everything and effectively who can deliver a very good insight from their data is, is really in charge of you know, the, the digital future. And uh, we believe that you know, just working with the data partners and having high quality data is extremely important because when you're trying to serve your clients, insofar your data is big, uh, the output you can deliver for a client is big. So I think the data partnership is something which is which is very, very important. So from your perspective, uh, coming from uh, from numerous partnerships, you know why why is it that you know why is it that it's still sometimes hard actually to make the the ends meet like corporate startup? What uh, yeah, what's your take? Uh, well, ultimately you're working with the. Uh, large institutions. Normally, I mean, we work with companies like Moody's Analytics or IHS Market, etc. They are multi-billion institutions. And, you know, for them to sort of work with the startups or just integrate or just, you know, to build a jointly solution seems, seems you know, too much of a hustle sometimes. And, you know, they are working with probably hundreds of companies at the time. So, so for them, it, it's more difficult. But when you come up with this something which uh, clearly benefits them and, and they see the clear, you know, use case for it, they did really try to be helpful and they really try to, you know, push us uh, towards the end client or introduce us even internally to the right people who can make the decisions. Uh, I, I think I think that's one thing they are trying to do, but because you have many different layers in the large organizations and the decision process, unless it's embraced from the really executive board level, it's sometimes very slow and sometimes you end up in situations where uh, everybody likes the partnership, but there is no budget for it. Or everybody likes to partner up with, but there is no internal strategy what to do with the outcome of that partnership. Let's say if you, knew, if you have a new product. So often you, you end up in situations where things don't move forward, not because there is no benefit, but there is no, let's say, leadership in place or a strategy on what to do in the innovation, how to implement it and how to go to market to the end client. So, so take so going from there, what would be your kind of key crucial recommendations to all the ones tuning into this session around and, and trying to learn and, and listen to what should we do when we when we want to enter into partnerships with large organizations? What would be your tr three main um, very important recommendations? Okay, so I think the first and most important one is please make sure that the leadership has embraced innovation. There is a clear strategy at the executive level of the company you want to partner up with to deliver innovation. If that's not in place, you're purely wasting your time. Second, make sure that your product is ready to discuss innovation with those partners, because there is a certain level of expectations for your product to meet, and you don't want to be wasting your time with product which is not ready yet for the market. So please make sure that when you approach uh, large institutional providers or you know corporates, uh, make sure that your product is ready. And then once, once there is a decision to uh, implement the product and deliver it to the client, uh, do make sure that you can execute to the highest uh, level of quality possible and uh, try to shorten time to market to two to three months in so far feasible. Great. And I will hurry on to you, Klaus, and, and I would actually like to ask you the same. So kind of from, with your experience being a, a, like a global tech company uh, entering into, like, I think you mentioned at 1.60 different uh, partnerships, what are your th three main recommendations when entering into partnerships? I'm aligned with uh, Igor on, uh, on quite uh, a bit of this, but I would, uh, for the ones who are watching this and wanting to partner with a global, there's one more thing that you would really want to think about is that the global company takes on a bigger risk sometimes when they work with you because they've got a big relationship with a big client out here. Now you bring in somebody and if they fail, that kind of robs off on you and you have to clean it up and so on. So when you partner with somebody like Eager said, be ready with the product, make sure it has the right quality and then execute at the highest level. What happens and what I've seen with many of these is you get in, you do exactly that. It's a great product. You execute at the highest level. The customers, the first 10 customers you, you partner on are super happy and it spreads like a viral. It, it goes super fast after that. If you fail the first couple of, of, uh, of instances, the sales force of the big company is going to go like, not for me. 
uh, why would I want to ruin my, part, my, my relationship with a customer to partner with, the, with this company, right? So, so really, really, I think that's the, the optimal. And then, yes, get the alignment and get the price and blah, 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 all this. But really, once you get in there, make sure you execute. And then it goes. Great. And in one sentence, if you can distill it, Christina, one, one, uh, you know, one key recommendation. I think uh, top management commitment, as, as both Igor and, and Klaus said, but also I think our success is based on the fact that we don't stress it. We don't have a KPI that we need to enter into to two or three startup uh, corporations each year or so on. We meet a lot of startups and then it's a lot of based on chemistry. Do we like the people we meet? Do we trust the product that they present to us? And then we work from there. So that's uh, my recommendation to the incumbents out there who need to, who wants to work more with startups. Great. Thank you, Igor. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Christine. Thank you to all of uh, you guys out there that joined us for this session. Stay tuned. There's a lot more to come on our Hyper Local channel. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Hi from Copenhagen FinTech Lab. <laughs>